Several years ago, Pope Francis instituted the Feast of Mary, Mother of the Church, and he put it, situated it on the liturgical calendar the Monday after Pentecost, which is today. So at the end of the Easter season, uh, the culmination of the sending of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, uh, the next day, the Pope invites us to ponder the gift of the Blessed Mother as Mother of the Church. I think of um, Mary as the two bookends of the whole Christ event. So we think of her at the moment of the Annunciation when she gives birth to Christ, who is head of the church, or she conceives Christ, I should say, as head of the church and gives birth to him at Christmas. And then theologically speaking, it's so logical and appropriate that she be present at the birth of the body of Christ. So she, she births the head um, in the mystery of Jesus' incarnation. She's present when in the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ, the church is born as well. It's a powerful, beautiful image of Mary gathered in prayer with the disciples in the upper room, um, in that first novena, praying, asking for the um, overflow of the Holy Spirit. So just as the Holy Spirit overshadowed her at the moment of the Annunciation, so too, so too now the Holy Spirit overshadows uh, the church in its inception and immediately the apostles go out on mission. So the documents of the Second Vatican Council concluded with uh, a whole beautiful reflection on Mary as mother of the church, that she is mysteriously involved in the birthing of the church and she is personally our mother given to us by Christ um, from the cross on Good Friday afternoon. So for Mary's maternal presence in our life, in the life of the church, uh, we give thanks and praise to God, knowing that um, there's such a complete identification between her and the church that we can see in the scriptures where, where Mary is engaged in um, the life of Jesus in those same ways she's engaged in the life of the church. For Mary and her beautiful love for us, uh, we give thanks and praise.